What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. <clears throat> What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Yes, I used to sound like that. The later you transition, the basically deeper your voice is going to be. Um, I was a little more on the fortunate side. I transitioned at 19. But that means I went through a male puberty. And so I used to sound quite like this. So for the past two years or so, I have seen a speech therapist. They are not cheap. Not everyone is sort of in the right financial position to see somebody. If you do have the means, then I absolutely recommend it. However, if you do not, I give you 10 tips that I have learned on my path to feminizing my voice that will help you in the long run. Disclaimer, I am not a speech therapist. And secondly, this stuff may or may not help you. And possibly these are exercises that my speech therapist assigned to me that would cater to my voice in particular. Everyone's voice is different and everyone's goal in feminizing their voice is a bit different. And lastly, a lot of this takes practice and persistence and perseverance that eventually your voice is going to change. So we're going to get right down into it. But if you do not know anything about me in particular, my name is Demetria Sparrow and I'm here to make you the long, cool woman fam that I know you can be. I do have an Instagram and a Facebook, so make sure you're following me there to get nice and updated on the latest content. And if you like videos like this, be sure to subscribe. You will not want to miss what is next in this journey to freedom and femininity. The first thing you're going to want to do is avoid getting in the trap of practicing falsetto. So I talked about this in a older video. Essentially what I'm talking about is you're kind of talking a little bit more in this row and you're upping, upping your voice. I got to explain like, why would someone want to do that? In your first year transition, you're basically an emotional time bomb and you want to go to any measure necessary to get rid of any dysphoria you have. This voice is a lot easier to do than working over and over and over over the course of a couple of years in order to sound like this. Why does this not work? If you practice this voice, it will not change over time. I practiced for like four or five months on doing this voice when I was walking over to work. I started singing like it and um, thankfully none of it is recorded. And I'm recording my voice every two weeks to see if it does change. It does not change. And then I was like, OK, I'm doing something wrong. I'm not aware of the tools necessary to change my voice. I'm going to have to see a speech therapist. The other reason is this sounds totally unnatural. It does not sound like it's the actual voice coming out of you. And the thing we do not want, if we're talking about being unclockable, is sounding like we are impersonating almost what we think a woman is going to sound like. So when you go into falsetto, people look at you and, they, and it sounds like you're putting on a voice. It's not coming from your chest. It doesn't feel big. It doesn't feel powerful. Because it's a little airy. It's in the head. It's way too breathy. Absolutely avoid that. This basically leads into the second tip in that you're going to be practicing in working it from your chest. Now, this is not absolutely universal. Sometimes with certain laughs you do, sometimes with certain pronunciations. It can be kind of in your throat. It can be kind of nasally. In order to make your voice sound naturally more feminine, more clockable, that is the area you want it to come out of. So you're going to take your hand and you're gonna lay it on your chest. So say for example, if it's in falsetto, I'm not feeling any vibrations in my chest. Say right here, I'm like, okay, this is very much in uh, the chest. But also I've worked my voice to where when I sound like this, I feel the same vibration coming from my chest. So that is a big thing I got to tell you. If you want to make it sound natural, like it's not made up, got to work on your chest. The third tip I would give you is do not turn your feminine voice off. Let me lay some points down because this sounds a little scary. <sighs> People are at a disadvantage, like trans women will, if you're in the closet, they're there are situations and environments where exploring and inhabiting the gender identity you feel it's either not safe or you're not comfortable or it's it's just not good to do. Possibly one of the best tips I could give is you actually do want to practice it 
everywhere you go. When you're at work, when you are reading something, when you're talking with friends, when you're talking with family, if you are uncomfortable trying to do that, this is a progression. You're gonna be upping your pitch ever so slightly over time. So for one thing, how do I explain it? When I was starting like this, my voice was right here. Like my, my pitch was right here. But if I wanted to practice it, I would go a little more like this and it's slightly up and it's slightly a little bit different. And that makes a big difference in the long run. This is a lot easier if you're in the closet and you're in an environment where it's not safe to come out because nobody is no really going to notice a huge difference. They're going to be like, OK, it, it may maybe their voice is slightly different, but they're going to recognize your voice. And since changing your voice takes a long time, the progression is going to be so gradual that not many people are really going to notice. So in my routine, what I did is I usually took most of the time, at least a half an hour to get bare bones, down and dirty practice for my day. And then I'd kind of create a baseline pitch for when I'm interacting with people or say when I'm reading a book. It's all about training your voice to automatically sound like it. There was a time where it took a lot more effort to be able to sound like this, but since I do it all the time, I don't even think about it. It just sounds like the voice that's gonna come out of my mouth. Next is, <clears throat> uh, and <sighs> a lot of the idiosyncrasies in your voice are going to take some work. These are things that you might not end up practicing or you might not think about, but they do make a big difference in that everything has to be consistent, right? So, I mean, say for example, you want your voice to sound feminine enough that even when you shout, it's still within that feminine range. Cause a lot of the time there was some issues like when I was, um, when I was emotional, uh, when I was mad and when I wanted to shout and make my voice louder. And also when I laugh, all of these things, there's an imbalance. So when I talked normal, I sounded like this, but if it was something that took a little bit more, or if it was something I couldn't quite control, say when you laugh, you could sound like this, but then when you laugh, you're like, ha, ha, ha. so that is something I'd want to practice on. Sometimes when you're clearing your throat or when you're sighing, like you're reacting emotionally to something and it's just a natural reaction. And so you're not planning to make it sound like that. These are things you should be practicing. What I could sound like if I was trying to clear my throat, I'm like, <clears throat> but instead I've trained it to go, <clears throat> or when you are trying to figure out something, say somebody is asking you something, you could be like, uh, or you could go, uh, so it's more consistent, homogenous with the rest of my speech. Same thing with when you sigh, you're disappointed in something or something at work isn't working. And then you're just like, uh, or you could go, uh, add a little breathiness in there and it's consistent. Next thing you want to do is emphasize as many E sounds as possible. This is. It's kind of a stereotypical thing, but this is something that people pick up on and they notice and they perceive it as way more feminine. So I'm going to read a passage from the Rolling Stones Wikipedia article like I, like I do in the in my next video about an actual speech therapy session in progress. I'm going to say it kind of flat with no emphasis on the E sound. So the Rolling Stones are an English rock band formed in London in 1962, diverging from the popular pop rock of the early 1960s. The Rolling Stones pioneered the gritty, heavier driven sound that came to define hard rock. So, I mean, I have a lot of the E stuff down. You probably notice that when I read that, it sounds like my voice is somewhat lower and not as excitable. So if I were to read this again, the Rolling Stones are an English rock band formed in London in 1962. Diverging from the popular pop rock of the early 1960s, the Rolling Stones pioneered the gritty, heavier driven sound that came to define hard rock. There's also, I find you could include with this an emphasis on the ooh sound, like say Tuesday, for example, you could say Tuesday, or you could be like Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. So it's a little bit of an upper, goes up just a little bit. Or you could take playing, for example. So you could take the A sound instead of going playing, playing, be like playing, playing, 
playing. The stones started playing covers. The stones started playing covers. The stones started playing covers. So it's all about emphasizing the right stuff. And this leads into the next tip, which is emphasizing the S's. Whenever someone is trying to impersonate a gay man, they're usually emphasizing the S's. The Rolling Stones started out playing covers and were out of the forefront of the British invasion in 1964, also being identified with the youthful and rebellious counterculture of the 1960s. Also being identified with the youthful and rebellious counterculture of the 1960s. They found greater success with their own material as I can't get no satisfaction. Get Off My Cloud and Painted Black became the number one hits in the UK, North America, Australia, and Europe. It seems, from what I know, again, I'm no speech therapist, but um, kind of the goal of um, a lot of what feminizing your voice seems to be is taking your dialogue, instead of it just being, you know, instead of it just being a straight line and talking like this, a lot of it is taking a straight line and going up like this and going really a little more emphasis on certain words and certain parts of a sentence. And that segues into the next tip, which is intonation. If you're a fan of ContraPoints, you'll find that she does this quite a bit when she's explaining something of her topic. She'll kind of go upwards and then down, upwards and down within her sentences. Whereas indirect bigotry manifests as concern or debate about a host of proxy issues. It's often defensive in tone rather than offensive. Frequently the claim is that a once needed liberation movement has now gone too far, but it's now the activists who are the new oppressors. The Rolling Stone's estimated record sales of 240 million makes them one of the best selling music artists of all time. In the mid 1950s, Jagger formed a garage band with his friend Dick Taylor. The group mainly played material by Muddy Waters, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Howlin' Wolf, and Bo Diddley. It's kind of a soft up within the sentences where she'll up her pitch on certain words and parts of the sentence. Again, that is all about avoiding the flat curve within your sentence pronunciation and emphasizing certain parts that you have. And I think she's gotten it down to a point where she does it very subtly. It doesn't feel like she's almost trying. Now I feel like I'm trying to do it. <laughs> because now I'm talking about it. Next tip you're going to be talking about is warming up. When you are trying to change your voice, you want to be able to make it a little bit more malleable. So quick ways in which you can do that is first do some neck stretches. So you do this side, stretch out your trap, I think so, for 20 to 30 seconds. Go on the other side. You're going to want to go stretch down like this up like that. What I like to do is kind of emphasize certain sounds and then I'll be like or you could do kind of like a horse kind of thing like we like to call those motorcycles when you do it makes your voice feel a little bit more free in order to do what you can with it. You'll be able to get to certain pitches that you wouldn't have been able to go to or and what I also do is kind of water gurgling exercises. So here are a couple clips from my uh, in session video. In 1969, so there's a series of exercises. It's kind of, from what I know, the reason you kind of gurgle your water as a way to warm up is that you can kind of get to certain areas without it taking as much effort as it would if you don't. It's kind of a way to kind of mask how difficult it is to get to a certain point. So sometimes you're practicing your pitch and you'll be gurgling your water and you're like, oh, I can get to this high. So the times to warm up at the start of your day before you are in a situation where you're going to be interacting with people, just a quick two minutes will really help in the long run, especially when you're really tired. You're kind of a little droopy and you're sounding a little like this sometimes. You do a quick <laughs> 
because that way you're quickly adjusting to the pitch that you are aiming for. Next tip is kind of similar to the other one, which is know your weak points. So like I said, it's harder to practice on things that don't come naturally to you. So laughter kind of comes naturally and spontaneously to us. So it's a lot harder to practice for something like that or when you're very sad or when you're shouting, when you're angry. A lot of this stuff takes extra practice. That way when a spontaneous reaction happens, you kind of train your voice to sound a certain way when those emotions occur. It may not just be with emotions. It could be, say, when you're working out. When you grunt and when you're panting, it's very difficult to control that. So if you do happen to work out, say if you're doing uh, sit-ups or whatever, like just train your body, even if you're not naturally grunting, just go, ooh, ooh, instead of ooh, ooh. Instead of that, you could add a little breathiness to it and go ooh. A little bit of the ooh sound works a lot better. This is an example of understanding that everyone's voice is slightly different. You're gonna have strong points that are gonna be easier for you to grapple onto, and then there's gonna be weak points. Notice throughout the day when you're talking to people, if you find when maybe you laugh, like me, there are those instances where your voice just drops down, and then the dude is just come right back. You've noticed that in a lot of my videos that uh, when I slightly snicker, slightly laugh, I'm like, <sighs> I don't usually laugh like that. That's one of the ones I am currently working on and I'm too embarrassed to do it now. Maybe I'll be able to do it in the future. And the last tip, which I have recently started to learn about is using what's called flow. So let's go back to the falsetto thing. So the reason you don't sound like this. For one of the problems with that is it's really, really breathy. It's to that point where it sounds like you're impersonating the breathiness that um, a woman has. Now there's two people that I can think of who I want to compare in this. One is Natalie Mars. If you're cool like me, you know who that is. And you have ContraPoints again. If you listen to both of them, I'll probably have clips in just a second of them talking. Whereas the indirect bigot is always defending something, always a knight in shining armor. And to answer your question, no, not in the romantic sense, but I cared about him. I was honest with him. That's why he married me. Natalie Mars sounds a little bit more nasally, a little bit like this, really emphasizing the ease as well. And then it seems with ContraPoints, how do I, how do I do it? With ContraPoints, she sounds a little bit more grounded and there's a little more of an airiness to it. Both of these voices are very passable. They could come out into society and no one would really kind of assume their gender identity because they both look great as well, but voice is a huge, huge part of passing within society. I think with ContraPoints, she's kind of at a level where if you just heard her, you can kind of go, is that a trans woman or is that just like a cis woman? And I think the reason for that is because she has what's more what's called flow in the sense that there is um, a sense of breath to where it's not overbearing, it sounds very, very natural. It sounds like that's just the voice she was born with. Um, whereas someone like Natalie Mars is, it's kind of a little more locked in this nasally, there's not a lot of breathiness going on. The thing is I've kind of debated whether I want something like Natalie Mars's voice or do I want, you know, a more uh, flowing voice like ContraPoints. You kind of have to figure that out for yourself. The way this works, again, I'm not an expert on this. There's something within your vocal cords in your throat to where when you sound like this, something has closed up in here to where it feels a little constricted when you try to make yourself sound like this. And when you talk a little bit more like this, a little bit more airy, you're letting air come out of your throat. It feels like something has opened rather than constricted. And I've noticed this. Let's take someone like John McClain, for example. So John McClain is an unbelievable, unbelievably passable as a woman, but he identifies as a man. His voice does sound masculine. There's a little bit of an airiness to it, to where you can kind of sense a little bit of androgyny in the voice. Oh man, am I gonna have to do a John McLean impression? Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to give you the perfect cat eye tutorial. There's fluent air coming through, whereas instead, if there was no air coming out, he would sound more like, Hello everyone, today I'm going to give you a little... It sounds like proper masculine, 
right? These are some things you should be thinking about. Is this a part of it I want? Um, is this what I'm aiming for for my voice? It seems a little bit more evident that if you have more air passing through and you have slight breathiness, that it does tend to feminize your voice to a larger degree. That is it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check these out for yourself. Hopefully they give you a basic groundwork as to how to modify your voice to a certain degree. Hopefully these are some good tools that you can try out. If you do have the means though, definitely see a speech therapist. They'll be able to take care of the uniqueness of your voice and they'll be able to work toward your own personal goals rather than just something that is um, totally universal. So for example, some makeup looks are not going to adhere to everyone. You might have done every single step necessary in order to look the same as that person, but your face is different, your eye shape is different, your lips are different. Everyone is very unique. So here's a video the algorithm wants you to watch and here is my most recent video. Stay beautiful everyone. Take care.